Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to go over question 73 to 75 of section 3 of the pink booklet. So this is a question about hemoglobin dissociation curves. And you've probably seen some of these before. Um, so we're going to start off with question 73 then. It says, which of the following statements is most accurate? So let's have a look at the two figures. So we've got one that shows a percentage increase in ventilation volume and another that shows the haemoglobin saturation um, at a range of partial pressures of oxygen. So going through them each in turn, um, A says at a PO2 of 60 tor, both birds have an increased ventilation volume. So looking at figure two here, we can go across to 60 tor on the x-axis and we can see that x line x um, or species x doesn't have any increased ventilation at that point, but Y does, and so A isn't true. B says at PO2 of 60 tor, neither bird has an increased ventilation volume. Again, we've just discussed how one does, so um, that's not true either. Then if we were to look at C, it says the bird with a lower oxygen affinity increases ventilation at a lower PO2. So what is this oxygen affinity? So say we've got these sort of two curves like this. The lower down the curve is, the lower the oxygen affinity. So out of X and Y, let's say this is X and this is Y, Y has a lower oxygen affinity. Now the reason for that is you can think it is lower down, but it's also more uh, in this direction too. So you'd need a higher partial pressure of oxygen to get the same saturation. So remember saturation is going to be up here and this is going to be the pressure of O2. And that's why Y has a, a lower oxygen affinity. So the bird with the lower oxygen affinity, they're talking about Y, says Y increases ventilation at a lower PO2. So looking at figure two here, we've got obviously these two lines, X and Y, and below 60, X has an increased ventilation, and below 80, Y has a lower ventilation or an increased ventilation. Um, so actually the bird with the lower oxygen affinity increases ventilation at a higher PO2. So Y starts to begin uh, ventilation at a PO2 of 80. So that means the answer for 73 is going to be D. 74 then says which of the following statements is best supported in figure 2 the difference in starting PO2 or that no increase in ventilation is primarily related to the points on the two curves in figure one, where what? Okay, let, let me get rid of some of these and we can have a look at this um, diagram again. So as we go towards the top of this y-axis, there's going to be an increase in the oxygen saturation. So that means there's more oxygen available to the tissues. There would be no need for extra ventilation if the haemoglobin is fully oxygenated. If it's already um, fully bound with oxygen, there's no need for any extra ventilation. It's a waste of energy. And so if you think about where on this graph here, where would you need to have extra ventilation? Well, of course, it would be whenever you have less oxygen. And so you'd have um, no increase in ventilation, which is what this is asking about, this starting POT, this no increase in ventilation, is of course then obviously going to be primarily related to the points on the two curves where they start to flatten because that's where they're reaching their capacity for oxygen. So that means that the answer for 74 is going to be C. 75 says which of the following is closest to the differences between haemoglobin saturation of the two birds when increased ventilation starts to occur. So let me again just clear up this diagram a little bit. So remember this is going to be line x and this is going to be line y. And there's going to be two different points where they start um, this increased ventilation. So we know that x starts ventilation at a PO2 of less than 60. So what we can do then is uh, draw a line up here at 60 to this top line. So obviously I haven't drawn this to scale, so let's have a look at figure one actually on the paper. But this is the, the line you'd want to, to draw. And you can see that it goes up and hits a 
percentage hemoglobin saturation of just over 90. And then if you do the same thing for Y at 80 PO2, because that's when it starts its ventilation, you get a percentage saturation of hemoglobin of just over 95 or so. Yeah, pretty much 95. So then out of the four options we've been given, which is 5, 10, 20 and 30%, what's the difference in those things? So if one's nearly 90 and one's nearly 95, then the difference is going to be about 5%. So that means 75 is going to have an answer of A. So that was question.